John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, uh, national NFL columnist, Fan Rag Sports NFL. As uh, we get ready, the combine is today. We get ready for next week's opening of NFL free agency, and we start off, John, with uh, news early this morning, which I found to be kind of interesting. Get your take on the uh, Brandon Cooks move because it took a little twist and turn. Yesterday, you had said you would do it in the blink of an eye in terms of trading a first-round pick, which we now know is number 14 overall if you're the Philadelphia Eagles. Alex Marvez from Sirius XM Satellite Radio says the – New Orleans Saints are only looking for possibly or probably a second-round pick. How come the deal's not done by now? Well, probably because uh, that's not necessarily – Alex, you know, said that. And you know, Mike, from being on the radio, sometimes you blurt things out that maybe you don't mean 100%. And when you're on the radio four hours a day, uh, occasionally things will come out. That's not to say – Look, the Saints are looking to move on from Brandon Cooks, and if that's the best they can get, they might make the trade. doesn't necessarily mean that's all they're looking for. Uh, in fact, when we talk about Tennessee and possibly switching first-round picks and things of that nature, uh, that's still in play. But one thing I said is, when I talked about it yesterday is I, the mentality of the NFL – it values the first-round picks. That's what I was trying to get across. So there's no question about it. In my personal mindset, it's very, very unlikely you're going to get a player as productive as Cook at number 14 overall. But NFL teams don't look at it that way, and the Eagles are not alone in that case. So maybe that's all they can get for Brandon Cook. If that's the case and the Eagles are able to swing the deal, that's another home run. And we just saw Howie Roseman finish off a home run today when the Vikings won the coin toss and the Eagles get the 14th overall pick. Yeah, I don't know how much uh, that helps in terms of one spot up, but that you know it, it could be a big difference because you think about what the Eagles had to do last year to try to move up. Who knows if those deals gets done if they're one spot back? Well, yeah, I, I mean, it's not necessarily moving from 15 to 14. I agree with you. That's probably not going to make that much of a difference. Uh, unless Indianapolis is looking at the same player. But uh, just from a mentality, from a first-round standpoint, the Eagles would have picked 12 if they didn't trade up to get Carson Wentz. And now they're picking 14th uh, by giving up a player that wasn't in their plans. It wasn't going to be here in 2017. Uh, Even if he started and played well all of last season, he wasn't going to be here. So from that standpoint, it's just an unbelievable trade from from the Eagles' perspective. Talking with John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, and, of course, uh, all the NFL stuff, uh, you know, the Brandon Cook stuff. So if they're offering potentially uh, a second, the Eagles are, that's number 42 in the second round. Um, that That's a home run deal for them, right? I mean, you said you'd do it in the blink of an eye for a first. If it's for number 42, that, that's a home run, right? Oh, sure. And that's what I said. I, I mean, the Saints – Look, the Saints need bodies on defense. We kind of talked about it, and and that's what they're trying to do, evidently, is just pick up bodies on the defensive side of football and finally turn things around. Uh, So that's how they're looking at things from their mentality. Uh, As I said, you know, the Eagles probably would make the deal right now. Uh, Obviously, it wouldn't become official uh, until – uh, the new league year starts on March 9th, but you could uh, work out the deal ahead of time uh, before making it official. Uh, they would do it, but the Saints, obviously, they want more. And when you have a uh, a 1,200-yard receiver, there's a possibility they're going to get more than that. Hmm. Uh, Brandon Marshall, any interest? Uh, no, not from my standpoint, because he's 33. He's going to be 33 later this month. Uh, would he help? Can he still play? Yes. But we've talked about that before uh, in the mentality and how he said it again at the combine. He said, look, we're trying to build this team up uh, with young players that can grow with Carson Wentz, and that's not Brandon Marshall. He would be a huge impact for the short term. 
but I don't, I don't think, in, and Howie said, this team is, is not one player away. And from Brandon Marshall's standpoint, you know, a, as you go through, we, we just went through the Terrell Owens controversy about the Hall of Fame. If you look at Brandon Marshall's numbers, they're historic. Uh, he's got six 100-catch seasons. He's got eight 1,000-yard seasons. He, 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 he's got, over the past decade, nobody's caught more balls. Nobody's got more yards. He's second in touchdowns. He's one of the most productive receivers of all time. But he's bounced around from Denver to Miami to Chicago to the Jets, and he's never won. And he wants to go to a situation where he can change that narrative and, and make at least a strong run toward the Super Bowl. I don't think that's necessarily Philadelphia. John, what if you were able to add Cooks via trade? Do you still add another free agent receiver? Well, you could, but it wouldn't be a high-profile one. It certainly wouldn't be all Sean Jeffrey. It wouldn't even be Kenny Stills. Anybody who's going to get a lot of money, if you're going to add Brandon Cooks, that's it. They probably need more bodies, and it'd be nice to get uh, more contributors, but certainly that would be the high-profile guy. He would be your number one receiver. And even though he's not the biggest guy in the world, uh, on this team, he would be buying far and away the, the top receiver. And uh, production-wise, he's shown that he's capable of, of handling a high volume, and I think he would make Jordan Matthews better. But, hey, I, I just don't believe in Nelson Aguilar, and I don't think the Eagles do either. So do they need more than one receiver? Yes, probably. Uh, John, I want to switch gears real fast. Uh, some reports that the Eagles uh, working on an extension with Bo Allen. Does that kind of signify the end of Benny Logan's tenure? Is that uh, kind of uh, the writing on the wall, the tea leaves, if you will? Yeah, it's part of it. Uh, I mean, he's going to get too much money on the open market. And we've talked about the Eagles and their salary cap issues. Uh, and, and Benny's a good, but he's not a great player. And he's going to get overpaid in free agency. And I think that's one of the examples of you'd love to have him back if you could get him back at a at a decent number, but it's not going to be possible. So uh, Bo Allen played well in his limited role, got a couple starts when Benny was hurt and, and performed pretty well. But uh, I think you're fooling yourself if you think he's going to be a replacement for Benny Logan. Right? Is he a I, guy I that you could count need... on? Is he a guy that you can count on to play starting snaps 16 weeks? No, I don't think so. And and he would certainly be a different type of player. Uh, he, he's a run stuffer, and he's not going to get give you much as far as an interior push on the pass rush. And he's best suited to be what he was last season, and that's a uh, a rotational guy uh, who plays 25, 30 snaps a game. The more you give him and the more he plays, uh, he's probably going to be exposed a little bit more. But he's still a worthwhile player, and that's why the Eagles yeah. are, are working on the extension. Yeah, no question about it here. Uh, you know, the Eagles have some very interesting decisions to make, uh, not only in free agency, but their own house as well. And Betty Logan sits at the top of that list. You know, one thing – uh, with these wide receivers in free agency and trade, I guess uh, it kind of goes to show that Howie Roseman, in terms of being in, in a Brandon Cooks deal, this goes back to a couple of years ago where Howie ends up making a trade, you know, where he ended up getting, um, uh, what was the kicker, Cody uh, Parkey, uh, Indianapolis. you know, for, for a guy who doesn't really play in the league. He seems to find these teams that have to have guys that they have to move or, uh, things like that. He he's pretty good at uncovering situations where that team has to get rid of a guy, and they don't have to get rid of him for because they don't like him or whatever. It's just that they have salary cap issues, and they have a guy behind them in Mike Thomas that they feel comfortable with. Yeah, and you know he complained a little bit uh, about how he was used in the offense, uh, and and I think that's a concern from the Saints standpoint. But you know what team in this league? Hmm. Right. hasn't dealt with a receiver that has had issues. And I, I kind of like that because he's catching 80 balls a year and he still wants it more. So I kind of like that mentality 
uh, of a guy who thinks he's such a, a great playmaker, he should be constantly fed the football. I, I don't have much of an issue with that. But as far as Howie Roseman, yeah, I mean, if you look back at his history, when he's been in, in charge of the Eagles football operations, uh, taken out the one year for Chip Kelly, uh, nobody's made more trades except the Patriots. And so uh, he's proven that he's very inventive uh, and he's very creative. And this team is hell bent on getting help at a wide receiver at wide receiver. And if it's not coming from free agency, it's going to come from the trade market or the draft. That somehow he's going to find a way to add a big-time wide receiver to this team. John, there are some reports that the Jets aren't done cutting players and that they could move on from Eric Decker. Any interest in Eric Decker? Well, you have to see if he's healthy uh, first off. But, I mean, basically, again, a very productive guy. Uh, when he was healthy two years ago, he and Marshall just were tremendous uh, as a duo. Uh, and would he be an improvement? Yeah, I mean, you could say that about any better receiver, basically, uh, because they're all better than what was here. Uh, but That's no, true. he would not be, yeah, he would not be near the top of my list uh, because you have some injury concerns. And I think he's more of a complimentary guy in that, in that Brandon Marshall was the legit number one, and then he really excels as a number two, you prefer the Eagles to get a number one and then kind of hope that Jordan Matthews can become the Eric Decker. How about, uh, yeah, yeah, and Decker's a guy that, what, kind of fills a similar, I mean, I guess he would be uh, more than, he's not a slot guy, but uh, he's not a speedster either. He's not a, a big play guy, uh, you know, the, the kind well, of no, big. No, he's better than Jordan. I didn't yeah. mean it that way. Right. I just meant as a compliment, uh, you're right. He's 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 far more well-rounded uh, than Jordan, who's kind of pigeonholed uh, as a slot receiver. But uh, I don't think he's a true, you know, wide receiver one, as they say. I don't, I don't think he's a number one in this league. Uh, I think he's best suited as a complimentary uh, receiver, and he's a very good one. And he might might have been one of the two or three best number two receivers in football. But for the Eagles, I, I think they need the guy before uh, they worry about that complimentary piece. And, you know, if it comes down to it and they can't get Cooks and they get outbid uh, by Jeffrey, uh, for Jeffrey, for Stills, and he's on the market, uh, and he's healthy, yeah, then you visit it because he's an improvement. But I, but I think it would be far down on the list. All right, John, a couple NFL news and notes. Let's spin around the league a bit here. Let's start with uh, Tyrod Taylor. The Buffalo News senses that he could be released. Uh, is that a smart move for Buffalo, and does that indicate that they could be in the Romo conversation? Well, I, I you know, I think the Romo conversation starts with Denver and moves down from there. There was an interesting rumor today uh, that if Denver were to sign Romo, as most of us expect, all of a sudden they wouldn't mind dealing Trevor Simeon and Buffalo would be interested in bringing him in in a trade to be their starter. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of moving parts as far as Buffalo goes if they're going to move on from Tyrod Taylor. And that's gone back and forth when – when Rex was still there and Doug Whaley uh, had more power, it was almost a fait accompli. And then when Sean McDermott and Rick Dennison came in, they were saying, well, maybe we'll keep them because despite that $27.5 million number, which seems so large, that's over two years. So that's kind of a bargain when you look at what quarterbacks are getting. And, and now it seems to be, sort of a tennis game and, and volley back to where they're going to move on. Uh, so we'll see. I'm not entirely sure what Buffalo is going to do, but I, I don't think Tony Romo would have them in, in his number one spot. And I think he's going to be in the driver's seat. Yeah. It just seems that they're flip-flopping themselves. They don't know what they're going to do. You're saying, I don't know what they're going to do. They don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> well, that's, it's tough I don't to fault you. I don't team. fault you for not knowing what they're going to do when they don't seem like they know what they're going to do. Yeah. Well, and look at the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> I mean, 
Damn you. How do you not know what they're going to do when they don't know what they're going to do? The Cleveland Browns have the number one pick in the draft, and they have no idea what they're going to do. They're trying to sell people on maybe Mitch Trubisky being drafted. They're leaking that. They're still trying to get Jimmy Garoppolo from the Patriots. Uh, and they might, and when it comes down to it, I, I'm, I, I would not be surprised. One, two, or three, the Cleveland Browns, San Francisco 49ers, Chicago Bears, if one of those teams trades for Jimmy Garoppolo and gives up that top tier pick, uh, that's how desperate these teams are. Tough to find top level quarterback talent in the NFL, that's for sure. John McBowen with us here on 97.3 ESPN. And John, is this standing stance by him a way to, a way to gain interest? Colin Kaepernick opting out of his contract, becoming a free agent. He says he'll stand now. Any market out there for him? And the stance on his standing, is that a way to gain interest? Yeah, it's partially people don't want to deal with the extracurricular stuff. So to say you're going to do it and not create controversy, that makes it a little a little bit easier. Uh, but him opting out of his contract was just a way to control the narrative because that was a two-way option uh, for $14.5 million. And there was no way the San Francisco 49ers were going to pay him that. So you were either going to wait for them – to opt out or you could do it yourself and sort of pretend like you did it on your own terms. Uh, his market is as a backup and there's some thought that Seattle would be interested. Uh, but Colin Kaepernick is not viewed as a starter in this league any longer. Yeah. And that whole, uh, you know, as Pete mentioned, he, he announced yesterday basically that he won't kneel any longer. And uh, you wonder if he's just trying to get that whole stigmatism away from him that uh, he's going to bring a distraction to your organization, but it seems that that's too little too late, right? I mean, it just seems like this is, it almost yeah, seems as a starter and no, and nobody's going to want a backup who's going to create that kind of controversy. But this is so a guy, let, let's put this it. out there though. This was a guy who went to the Super Bowl and was within a play of getting back to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was a play away from winning the Super Bowl inside the five yard line. That too. Uh, against Baltimore. Uh, but, you know, he's not the same guy physically. He had three off-season surgeries last year. That was one of the issues where he was sort of infighting with Trent Balky, who was the 49ers DM at the time. Uh, he didn't rehabilitate with the 49ers. He did it on his own. And he's not the same guy physically. I, I, when he was going to the Super Bowl in NFC Championship games, he was this monster. Uh, 240 pound guy that could take the the pounding as, as a dual threat uh, runner passer, and he showed back up last season. He lost 20 pounds. He's just not nearly as impressive uh, physically. And when you take that away from him, uh, he's not a great pocket passer. He never was. So uh, he's he's just not the same guy. And then on top of it, you do have some of the controversy aspects. And as I said, mm -hmm. if you're a head coach in this league, the last thing you want to do is answer questions about your backup quarterback and social injustices. I, I, they don't want to deal with that. Hey, when you come back so on – you... was... Yeah, go ahead. So that was the, the part that, yeah, uh, the fact that he, he said he's going to stand for the national anthem, that's trying to dampen – and say, look, you're not going to have the controversy. Take a chance on me. Uh, when you come back Monday, I want a full plan of what Buffalo's plan is in, with the quarterback. <laughs> but it's funny. I'm reading here uh, the top headline uh, is Bill's front office and coaches split on Tyrod Taylor. So don't feel bad. Everybody is. Uh, exactly. Although I think. And if Tyrod goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you two names. I already gave you one, mm -hmm. Trevor Simeon, because I do believe. Tony Romo is going to end up in Denver. And the second is Mike Lennon, who's a free agent. Uh, I think he's the underreported name that people are going to have interest in as a starter in, in the NFL. I uh, Look, I don't think Ty – this is like the whole – Alex Smith, Tyrod Taylor, like I think these guys are okay. like Alex Smith. I like he wins games for you. I don't think you can win the Super Bowl with Alex Smith. I think you can win 
enough to get to the playoffs, and that's it. Like, there's a ceiling of that's as far. Like, I don't think Alex Smith stinks. I don't think Tyrod Taylor stinks. I think Tyrod Taylor is good enough to be 8-8, eight 10-6. Eight, I think Alex Smith is going to be 10-6, and 12-4, and four, but they're not guys that will take you deep into the playoffs. You got to, I guess, if you're a front office, you have to decide, do I want to move forward with that type of player? Well, yeah, and that's the difficult part of it. And, and that's why I said, I, I've been saying for weeks that that $27.5 million is not a big number uh, for an average quarterback in this league. But you're right. You have to decide, hey, do you want to move forward and build around uh, a guy who's probably slightly above average? And if everything is, is – built correctly around him, you can make a run at the Super Bowl in a perfect year, or do you think you can improve somewhere else? Right. Do I want to be uh, Do I want to be the say, Atlanta Hawks and just be, like, in the mix with no shot of winning a championship, or do I want to take that, roll those dice, and try to find my franchise quarterback? It, it's a tough spot that so many teams in the NFL, and that's why they reach – in the first round for quarterbacks because they're all trying yeah. to find that guy who will get them from being a 10-6 and six wild card team. And that's why you, you'll probably have a lot of draft guys on now be, between now and April, and they're all going to tell you about how Trubisky isn't this and Kaiser isn't that and Watson isn't that good and they shouldn't be at the top of the draft. They're going to be at the top of the draft. I've been saying it, and I believe it. Two of the three are going to be taken in the top three picks, and that's because of the desperation of this league at the quarterback position. Either they're going to trade out with teams that want quarterbacks or they're going to take quarterbacks. They're going to be off the board quickly. All right, John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, uh, back on Monday, and we will be uh, in free agent week. Things will start happening on Tuesday. You'll start to hear tons of stuff. We'll have plenty of on Monday show. John, have a good weekend and don't use your personal email server. <laughs> Enjoy your weekend, guys. I, I, I do have a couple emails out to rush it, but they haven't responded. <laughs>